Thank you, Atlas. And gentlemen there, TSM resorting to relatively safe champions. You have to wonder whether or not they're a little shaken up after that first win of the day, or first loss of the day, rather. You know, I'm a little disappointed and heartbroken, kind of like when you get to a restaurant and and you're five minutes late after happy hour is already over. They picked the <laughs> safest champions you could possibly pick. Almost no, high, no skill ceiling to these champions. You got Maokai, Sejuani, Zig, Sivir, and Th Thresh would be the only exception, but they played at the previous game. Like, I feel like they just wanted to have a little bit of a burst of confidence. You'd expect them to win this game. Just guarantee the win. Pick these super safe champions so that you get a boost of morale. Maybe the expectations for them were set a little bit too high and the pressure is getting to them. You know, the entire crowd there wants TSM to win. A lot of people here want TSM to win. And then, you know, they get blown out of the water by Fnatic. They got to get their confidence back somehow because if they lost this game, they'd pretty much be out of the tournament. Yeah, I feel like losing to Fnatic is nothing bad, though. I think that Fnatic just played a really strong game. Um, but yeah, I thought TSM was, uh, I don't know, not so polarizing with the last picks. Going for the Ziggs, going not for an Assassin or anything like this. Not being going with any great TP plays, just actually beating them standard. And, well, that was actually the game. Yeah, they, st they still looked pretty, pretty scared. Yeah. Santorin didn't make any early moves for 11 minutes in the game. He didn't even show himself in a damn lane. Like, that guy needs to have some pressure if he's going to be competing in this tournament against the world's best. And these junglers, we saw EDG, we saw SKT, they're going to be putting pressure on lanes. He needs to step up. And I also think that picking things that are safe like this is fine. L low execution is totally fine. Like, it's, you say it's like getting to happy hour five minutes late, but the food is still good. You're still going to get <laughs> still there, at least. with what you pay for. The other thing, right, is where I think you don't have to give anything away in this game. You're going up against, like, SKT, EDG. These are must-win games now. Like, why are mm -hmm. you going to bust out a brand-new team composi uh, composition to beat the international wildcard team? Like, play something super standard, go back into your lane swap. You've played that way all season long. Like, you're not trying to blow these guys out of the water. Like, at the end of the day, a win's a win, and they just picked it up, so fantastic work. Exactly that. At the end of the day, a win's a win. Solid victory there for TSM, getting themselves on the board. We're going to kick it over to Shox for a word with TSM's man in the mid lane. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Dash. Indeed, joined here by Berkson. <laughs> at the receiving end of a lot of applause in this one. And well, one and one so far, and today in MSI, of course, the first thing I have to ask you is about that very first game versus Fnatic. Um, a lot of people, as said, coming in, really pinned you guys as the favorites. Is that maybe one of the factors why you guys didn't perform in that very first game? Um, I wouldn't say it was because we felt like we came in as the favorites. I think we just had some, we tried to pick out uh, Rain over his because he had been doing really well on it, but then he just picked Dragas and he played so well anyway. So I think we kind of came in with the wrong priorities in terms of the pick ban, and then we weren't ready for the Cassiopeia uh, pick, and it was something that Huni just did very well on. So I think next time we play Fnatic, we'll definitely adapt better, but they did better that game for sure. All right, so clear analysis already of everything that didn't go well in this game, in that game, and a very, very good game versus Bajiktas, but. Last game of the day, SK Telecom versus TSM. That is, of course, the one that you're very much looking forward to. How does the fact that you lost that first game change your confidence going into that one, and how much can you guys realistically do? Um, I think SKT, we have a lot better of a feel against them. We watched them play very recently in the LCK finals, and we scrimmed against them here. So we have a better idea of what they play. They may have a better idea of what we play, but I think we'll go in with a lot better planning against SKT. And uh, I don't think losing to Fnatic is going to really bring us down in terms of confidence. We'll, we still know we're a good team, and we know what mistakes we made and what we need to change. All right. Uh, is SK team, uh, SK team, SKT a team that you see that might come out with a curveball to you guys, or is that not something that uh, you guys are holding into account? Um, of course, they can throw a curveball at us, but they're also blue side, so they can't have the crazy counter picks on something like mid lane. They're probably going to be binding a mid, so I feel like SKT is going to be playing very, very solid, and I wonder what mid they're going to play. Yeah, well, we all are looking forward to that one. Congratulations on that victory, Bjorkson. And as for us, we're going to shoot it back over to Dash and the dudes over at the desk. Thank you, Shox and dudes. Uh, we're going to have a quick recap of the action we've seen so far today. First up, from game one, Fnatic versus TSM. We saw a lot of pressure coming out from Rainover early in the game. Man, poor Dyrus here, like getting killed <laughs> over and over in top lane. He's it used hurt. to it, let me tell you. Yeah. From NA, he's rather used to that. And then, this yeah. right here just shows how one-sided this matchup is. Gragas doesn't even get an assist. Cassiopeia <laughs> gets a full-on <laughs> solo kill. He's just there as a spectator to watch him But die. the pressure, and from game two, Besiktas versus SKT. 
slow start for SKT, but they showed that they were not going to be, uh, you know, put off kilter and later in the game dominated team fights. And their team fight was just so good in choke points. Azir Rumble, you cannot fight that there. Poor right, and though. finally, game three, EDG <laughs> versus AHQ. 25 minutes for uh, a five for two there in the jungle. It just shows that EDG, when they do have that slight lead, they're not afraid to fight. Mountain was looking for that engage, and they saw that coming and just immediately stopped there by make a really good support play. They were just like bashing hats the entire, <laughs> like ships the entire the night, <laughs> except they hit each other. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the real definition of ships in the night. Uh, running straight into, I mean, it, but it shows you too how close this game was in terms of on a knife's edge where this, you know, another second or two in a Karthus. Uh, yeah, and I think both teams were playing the skirmish game really well, but there was no towers falling down until 80 minutes. They were just fighting, 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 and then. It's a tank yeah. matter. It's a, it's a tank matter. <laughs> we throw yourself into each other and hope that you survive. Bumping heads, man. We covered it already. They're just going to keep running at each yeah. other. Uh, a fair number of games under our belt. Here's a look at how the teams are stacked up in the standings. Currently, EDG, Fnatic, and SKT are tied with one win apiece at the top of the table, followed by TSM, who's one and one after that victory over Besiktas. And meanwhile, AHQ and Besiktas are currently winless at the bottom of the table. So, gentlemen, initial thoughts on how this tournament is shaping up. I like the way that EDG was on top of that table. Definitely agree with that. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> had nothing to do with that right. alphabetical <laughs> order. <laughs> I, uh, I liked it. I think the next game coming up, which I think is Fnatic versus AHQ, is going to be the one that really tells us what's going on with these games. Because if AHQ manages to take this game, that means that they're no longer, as we thought, bottom two teams like they can actually have a run for the top four and make it into the semifinals which would be really interesting because that would mean that TSM and Fnatic or whoever else stra starts to lose games will be in contention for not even making it out of the tournament. Yeah, flip side of that, if Fnatic run over the top of them, it means their uh, team fight style wins against both aggressive and passive team comps, and everyone has to throw out that that they really don't understand the current meta, which is being thrown around a lot, because, yeah, they're going to do it against two teams. Yeah, I feel super excited right now about the game coming up, because I was right in the beginning with Fnatic, <laughs> and I think they come out really strong. And uh, just to grasp already it, to the front, I think that Fnatic does really well as well against the playstyle from HQ, and we kind of see fire against fire again. I, f I feel like, and uh, this is just something exciting me. All right, yeah. Well, we already we've got some great games under our belt. Still plenty of games to go. If you're looking to join fellow league fans and watch the midseason Invitational Finals this Sunday, you're in luck because Coca-Cola is teaming up with Cinemark Theaters to host viewing parties from coast to coast all over the country. Not only will attendees be uh, able to catch the best of five series action on a big screen, but they will also take home a collectible Heimerdinger Cup. The finals will play at 15 different locations on May 10th. And for more information, you can check out lolesports.com slash VP. Now we've j only just hit the halfway point when we return Fanatic will face off against AHQ Esports Club. Keep it tuned right here. The action continues in just three and a half. Oh, Double Doge. This is 10 a points for Double Doge. <laughs> yeah, that was the most troll coming to him. <laughs> now the boomerang. Double Doge is so low, misses the all, but it doesn't matter as the death sentence comes through. Last boy flashes out of the way, so close to dead. Nardi is right in the front, goes for it. Tries to make the big play, flash the way, still goes down to the critical strikes. Him and a turret falling down there as well. Centauron looking for the all, but doesn't even really need to use it as the Oculus takes almost all of his health. Soldrin way in the backside of the fight. Team Zillamid pick up their first win of MSI 2015.